Hi and welcome to my video. This video clearly demonstrates what is possible with some creativity to actually build your own arcade machine. The en entire arcade cabinet in this video was home built from using 18mm birch plywood. Um, some people generally use um, MDF but for this purpose because of the weight of the screen and the cabinet walls would bend out I actually chose to use birch ply. For those, for those old enough to remember, you may remember during the 80s there were such classics as Pac-Man, Space Invaders and also other classics such as Bomb Jack and also Sega's Outrun which remained all time classics at the arcades during the 1980s. My main aim with building this machine was to try and simulate those moments of, of my bygone youth. Indeed, original arcade machines did not have a PC inside of them to actually run these games. They had a, a single printed circuit board uh, with, which comprised of a processor and sound board which generally ran one game. Um, obviously, with PCs nowadays, it's quite possible to use emulation software. This software simulates the behaviour of the original arcade cabinets and on the internet you can find ROMs. ROMs are generally images of the original microchips which um, are actually plugged into the printed circuit boards of the original machines. And using this software it is quite possible to run thousands upon thousands of arcade cabinets from over 25 years ago all simulated in software. For the machine's control panel, I chose X Gaming's X Arcade Tank Stick, as can be seen here. Um, this comprises of two control sticks, a central trackball which acts as a mouse under Windows, and obviously there's buttons for each player on either side of the controller. Um, the actual controller connects to the PC via a USB cable, and of course, hidden under the control panel. This is not what your usual arcade machine had. The keyboard. Now, the purpose of adding a keyboard to my machine was because a lot of emulation software does need to be tweaked now and then, and um, access without a keyboard would be a slight problem. So, as you can see, it's neatly tucked away un under the controller. Here is a volume control. This adjusts the volume for my main subwoofer speaker which is inside the machine and my two satellite speakers which are located at the top of the arcade cabinet. Just slide that away. Here's the coin slots. Um, the actual coin slots you see here were the same which were used on Atari's asteroid cabinet. Um, as you can see there's a coin slot for each player. Um, the service door can be opened. I've actually basically put a lock on here. So what we're going to do is have a little peek inside. This is where all the gubbins remains. Uh, electronics uh, for the coin door. And also you can see my PC here. It's got a nice pretty blue cathode ray light in it to actually light up its innards. Um, this system was a Socket 939 motherboard, an Athlon 64 3800 processor with 1 gig of RAM. Um, it's more than adequate to actually emulate all the uh, um, arcade emulation software such as MAME and other emulators. Right, this is the coin slots inside the service door. As you can see here, there's two lights which are lit by a, a PC power supply and it's just a case of rigging up the yellow and black wires to actually light up the coin slots. Um, you see this printed circuit board which is just here. This is an Ultimark iPack 2 interface which mimics keyboard input um, and what this basically does when a coin is inserted into the coin slot it gives me a credit in MAME, um, in the actual MAME emulator, as if a key was pressed on the keyboard, which in this case would be the key number 5. For this to work, you see just down here, I'm not sure if you can see this, 
I've actually soldered the wires on here onto the micro switches. So what happens when a 10 pence falls down, it will trigger the micro switch, which sends an impulse to the IPAC2 interface, which is just here, and that then gives me a credit in MAME. So it basically acts like an actual arcade cabinet. Of course, you don't have to add this to your arcade machine, but I just thought it would be more authentic to actually add this, because I used to have a lot of fun putting 10 P's in machines in my earlier youth. Okay, and here's the front ports of the PC. Obviously, the um, the jack on the left is for the sound, which leads up to my speakers. The one on the right is the USB cable, which connects up to the iPad. There's my subwoofer speaker. This sits on top of the PC inside the arcade machine. All arcade machines generally had a um, backlit marquee. As can be seen here, I've got a, a one that says Main Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator. Um, this marquee was printed by a company known as Gremlin Solutions, who actually print arcade cabinet marquees. It was then sandwiched between two bits of plexiglass, and this is backlit using a um, UV light, which you can basically buy from, uh, buy, uh, buy, buy from your local hardware store. Obviously, underneath is our speaker grills. There we go. Now the actual marquee, these are called marquee retainers and obviously this holds, holds the marquee in place. It's just basically a case of having to cut these to size and they were screwed on from the underneath. All arcade machines generally use something known as T-moulding, as could be seen here. This is plastic edging what goes onto the edge of the wood. Um, to, to actually fit this onto the edge of the wood, it's a simple case of using an electric router with a um, routing bit and actually routing out a channel for the T moulding to sit into, and then this gives a nice finish. I managed to get quite a good finish on the machine. Um, I basically used white primer. I then a grey undercoat uh, to actually tint it down. I then finally black gloss paint uh, to actually get a good finish. Um, I would advise using a foam roller to actually apply the gloss paint and, and to apply light pressure and this gives a very good finish.